and Molly Rose in the back. <laughs> I don't want this to be a poem about you. You and the syllables in your name, how they slip through my teeth like lightning, leave me feeling shocked that a name and a collection of letters could ever be so breathtaking. No, I can't keep writing about the way your eyes light up when you say my name or about how I drown in the vulnerability of your eyelids. Translucent and bare, you have always seen right through me. Note that seeing through me is not the same thing as seeing me. I can't write this poem about you. You see, I've been working so hard to mend my broken parts, to garden my, mm, nope, <laughs> to tend to my garden and congratulate all the buds I got to bloom in spite of what feels like an imminent frost. I've been working too hard to coax out the parts of myself I never knew existed. Fragile and tender, they were always too scared to breathe with the lights on, to let me know they were still alive. If I spent every fourth minute thinking about you, who would water my flowers? Who would tend to my plants when the breeze rolls in? This is about me wanting myself more than you could possibly understand. And this is a quiet revolution, so I have to make this space. The space between you and I is so that I can keep my garden growing even on its most meager days. Even when the only thing that grows is my doubt, I will keep doing this water work, this plant work, this blossoming work, this blooming work. But if you want to call yourself a gardener, pick up a watering can and stand beside me. But remember, I can't be the one writing poems about how you break oceans to apologize and catch me moon jellies when I cry. So if you want to stand beside me while I make treaties with my broken parts planted tenderly in pots, then you have my permission.